Hallo, herzlich willkommen zu einer weiteren Runde Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. Ja, wir haben nur noch einen einzigen Weg vor uns. Wir haben nämlich das Quark-Ende im, äh, im letzten Anlauf geholt. Jetzt gibt es hier noch eine Möglichkeit, nämlich das... Ja, wir sind hier auf der tenmyoji route Und auf der kriegen wir auch wahrscheinlich auch das letzte Passwort, um hier weiterzukommen. Für die Bomben also. Schauen wir erstmal, wie es hier weitergeht. Was ist denn auf dem Weg dahin passiert? Zuallererst mit Tenmyoji hier durch. Also durch die, äh, ja, Infirmary, durch das Krankenzimmer. Anschließend Ally gewählt, von Tenmyoji dabei hintergangen worden. Ziemlich auf die Schnauze gekriegt. Anschließend dennoch wieder mit Tenmyoji und Clover, im, also Clover als Partnerin, in die Pressure Exchange Chamber. Hier wählt man Betray, passiert folgendes. Tenmyoji hat tatsächlich Ally gewählt. Clover hat neun Punkte, haut ab, fertig. Wichtig jetzt in diesem Fall also Ally wählen. Sehen wir uns die Szene einfach nochmal an. Wir selbst haben natürlich noch einen GP. Hey, Sigma, I wanted to ask you something. What's up? Could you pick Betray for me? What? I mean, I could try and like tackle you. But you're so big and strong, you'd probably just throw me on the ground and that'd be it. Uh, yeah, well, um... So I thought I might as well just ask you really nicely. Oh, I mean, I'd be happy to, um, pay you back. If you just pick Betray for me, then I'll listen to anything you say. Uh, anything? Yep, yeah, anything. So think carefully, okay? If you choose Ally, you're trusting him with your life. Yeah, if he chooses Betray, it's all over. Uh-huh. Are you really, really sure you can trust that old fart? Hey now, that's not very nice. The only safe choice is to pick Betray. But if he chooses Ally and we don't, Then I'll have nine BP. But you don't need to worry about that. Even if I do get nine BP, I won't just go and open the number nine door all by myself. I mean, Alice wouldn't have nine points yet. And I can't leave her behind. Please, will you pick Betray? 20 seconds remain. Until Ambidex game polling closes. The voting machine was in front of me. I didn't have much time left to think. Would I keep my promise to Tenmyoji and pick Ally? Or would I betray him for Clover and... and... If you just pick Betray for me, then I'll listen to anything you say. In the end, there was only one possible answer. Three, two, one. Ally. Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex Gates, now opening. Results from Round 2 of the Ambidex Game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. So, kannst laufen. Alles ganz gut. Also die Sache mit Fai und Luna und Dio. Ja, das Dio gegen die Betray-Welt ist typisch. Na gut, gegen wen wählt Dio nicht Betray? Außer in der ersten Runde gegen Luna wählt er Ally. Das ist aber auch schon alles. 
Vielleicht war der Quark auch, äh, auch einfach schneller. Aber naja, weiter im Text. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. Looks like you managed to trust me. Well, it seems like I made the right choice. Only did what I said I would. You really helped me out. Thanks. I can say the same thing. No need for thanks. At the corner of his mouth twitched into a grin. I felt myself smile a little in response. Clover, on the other hand, looked less than pleased. That was a bad choice, Sigma. And after I told you I'd listen to anything you said. Oh well, whatever. She sighed heavily, shot me one last annoyed look and stalked off. Across the room, Dio and Fi were already confronting one another over their own results. You tried to kill me and Luna. Can't say I'm surprised. Ah, oh, don't give me that. You knew exactly what I was doing. I knew you weren't stupid enough to pick Ally. You'd defend yourself with Betray, just like I would. Wait, where's Luna? In the infirmary, looking after Quark. Is that where Alice went to? Alice? No, she went into one of the AB rooms with Kay. Yes, we did indeed enter together. When the doors opened, however, she left, somewhat unsteadily, in the direction of the Cyan door. She left the warehouse? Indeed. Without even checking the results? Correct. There was little reason to check them. Yeah, it's not like Quark was going to betray you. Indeed. Can you two still choose Ally? Man, what a pair of bleeding hearts. If you say so. Being mocked for my compassion is a small price to pay for retaining my humanity. Where did Alice run off to? While we were in the AB room, she mentioned being quite tired. Perhaps she went to one of the cabins to rest. Oh, well, I guess that would make sense. An ominous rumble filled the warehouse. The Ambidex Gates have closed. Round three of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. The Ambidex gates can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them. We can open the gates as many times as we want. Hmm. That means the star keys can be used to play the AB game any number of times. If I understood that announcement correctly, that is. Hey, didn't Zero Junior say something about this? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically. The pair of solar assignments hop around a bit too. Yeah, he did. Can you guys all show me your bracelets? I want to see what all your colors are. Uh, Never mind. I want to see what all our colors and groups are this time. Within moments, a series of wrists were extended for me to examine. Okay, Phi. Also, yeah, that must be Phi. Sein. Cyan Pear. Oder ist das Phi? Nee, das ist Clover, glaube ich, oder? Schwierig. Magenta Pear. Ah, ne, Quatsch. Ein VP, das ist Fai, das eben war Clover. Das ist Tenmyoji. Yellow Pair. Red Solo ist äh, K. Green Solo ist Dio. Blue Solo ist Sigma. Das heißt, er muss mit dem Magenta Pair, glaube ich. Hä? Huh? It looks like all the colors are weird. Clover is a cyan pair, and Phi is a magenta pair, but Tamiyoji is a yellow pair. The three solos are red, green, and blue. K's red, Dio's green, and you're blue. Then how are we supposed to group up for the chromatic doors? I think they're gonna be white this time. Ah uh, yes, 
Dio told me about them. Very interesting. Yeah. They're white, all of them. I had a good look while I was waiting for Sigma to show up down in the warehouse. You should have seen them in, uh, then too, Fi. Yeah, I did. You're talking about the doors in the Floor B warehouse, right? Yeah, so lay it on us. How are the groups going to shake out this time? Fi nodded and began to explain. Option A. Tenmyoji, yellow, and me, blue, would form one group. Fi, magenta, and Dio, green, would form another group. Clover, cyan, and K, red, would form one the uh, would form the third. Okay. Blau muss mit gelb. Okay, ja gut, dann sind wir mit Tenmyoji. Stellt sich nur die Frage, wer mit Tenmyoji im Team ist. Huh? Wait, you mean there's only one option? Yeah. There's no other way we can group up to make white. Ach stimmt, da gibt's Sinn, wie das, das alles... Ja. Alice, Luna and Quark aren't here to show us their bracelets. So we don't know for sure what their colors are. But it's pretty clear they'll all be pairs. Since none of the pairs here have a partner. So they were yellow, magenta and cyan, right? Right. All right, what now? We've got plenty of time until those white doors open. Yeah, about an hour it looks like. I'm gonna go find Alice. Of course. I'll come with you then. Clover gave her a shrug and the two of them headed out through the cyan door. Do I really need to say it? The infirmary, right? You're going to go check on Quark. Yeah. He gave me a nod and trotted out through the yellow door. That left only three of us. Dio, Kay and myself. What are you guys going to do? Huh. Yeah... I think I'm gonna head over to the lounge and have a drink. You wanna tag along, Kay? Are you making fun of me? I find it rather hard to drink with this mask on. Ah, oh, right. Of course. My bad. Well, I'm out. Later. With a lazy wave of his hand, Dio slouched off toward the magenta door. It took me a moment to realize Kay was following him. Hey, what is this? You following me? No, you must be mistaken. I hope to investigate Floor B further. There are still several rooms I haven't visited. Okay, okay, you don't have to tell me your life story. See ya. The conversation ended as they reached the door and stepped through it. Alright. What should I do? I mean, what should I do? Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? Of course! I need to get the rest of that story out of Tenmyoji. The words were scarcely out of my mouth before I set at a dead run to the hall I and mean, down the hallway and toward the infirmary. Das könnte interessant werden. Die Geschichte war ja hier auch in der Zeitlinie. Huh? There's nobody here. The room was completely empty. I edged forward and peeked around the partition. There he was. Tenmyoji. He was standing next to Quark, apparently oblivious to my presence, looking down at something in his hand. A picture? I must have made some small noise because he suddenly looked up, saw me and hastily shoved the photo back into his pocket. What was that? It was a photo of something, right? Was it yours? Forget it. It's got nothing to do with you. But all of the stuff we had with us when we got grabbed was taken away. Why were you hiding it? Why should I tell all of you about one measly photo? Um, anyway, where's Luna? 
I asked her to leave. I wanted to be alone with Quark for a bit. So, why are you here? I wanted to hear the rest. The rest of what? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about that simulated manned mission to Mars. We heard that recording about it. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I'm getting old. Memory's not what it used to be. 67, so alt bist du gar nicht. Seem to be forgetting a lot of stuff lately. Hey, nice try, pal, but you're not getting away with it this time. You remember something, alright? You remember so much you told me it'll take way more than 10 minutes to tell it all. You really sure you want to know? Huh? Maybe I'll tell you and then you'll regret it. Maybe you'll wish you'd kept your full mouth shut. Just think about all the hopes you've got for the future and all the happy memories of your past. What if what I have to tell you makes everything you've ever believed ring hollow and the whole world just crumbles around you? You sure you want that? Hey, come on. You don't need to threaten me. This isn't a threat. I'm being honest here. Are you really, truly prepared? W well, of course. I never got the chance to say I am. Before I could, Fi exploded into the room, her face a mixture of anxiety and fear. Good. There you are. D did something happen? Alice... Alice is... Look, just come with me, alright? She's in the number two cabin. Without waiting for a response, Fi spun around and ran back out of the room. Tenmyoji and I exchanged a quick, confused look, then leapt up and took off after her. Alice! The first thing I saw when I stepped through the door was the blossom of red on her chest. It felt as if I'd walked straight into a brick wall. I stopped short, my body refusing to move. No. Why did this happen? I forced one shaking foot forward, then the next. My legs began to buckle and I put a hand against the wall to steady myself as my heart thundered in my chest. Calm down. Calm down. Now this looks pretty bad, but you don't actually know anything yet. Yeah, that's right. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe we can still save her. Then at last I pressed my fingers to her neck and those hopes were dashed. No pulse. Clearly she wasn't breathing either. Her pupils had dilated hideously, making her face seem somehow inhuman. No. No, it's not true. Why? Then I noticed it. All the blood must have distracted me, but now I saw that there was a scalpel buried in her chest. Judging by the position of its handle, she had been stabbed through the heart. I felt a sympathetic twinge of pain in my own chest and my stomach lurched. Bile and hopelessness rose up in my throat. I stood, hands balled tightly into white knuckled fists and took a deep breath. All around the room were the rest of the Nonary Games participants, except of course for Quark. I wanted to ask which one of them had killed her. Even if it had been one of them though, there was no way they'd answer. All I could do was stare at each one of them in turn, asking myself, is this person a murderer? The looks they traded with one another suggested that I wasn't the only person wondering if they were standing next to a killer. An unsettling silence filled the room. Clover was the first to speak. Who... who did this? Say something! Answer me! Please, Clover, calm down. We don't even know if she was killed. 
Then what happened? An accident? You think a scalpel just dropped from the ceiling and stabbed her? Cool it, kid. You did it, didn't you? Are you nuts? Then who did it? Who killed her? Clover, even if we assume that she was murdered, that doesn't necessarily mean the killer was one of us, does it? Wait a minute. You went into the AB room with Alice during the last round, didn't you? Something happened in there, didn't it? No, nothing happened. Don't lie to me! There's no way Alice would just run off like that! She wouldn't leave me! Something happened! If she was going to leave, she'd tell me! She... she... Hey, Clover. Don't you think just assuming Alice was murdered is jumping the gun a little bit? How can you look at her and say that? Scalpels don't just stab people all by themselves! Oh, I see. I see. I get it now. You're all in on it, aren't you? It wasn't just one killer. It was six! No wonder you're so anxious to say this wasn't a murder. Clover, please, just settle down. Huh. Fine. Show me some proof, then. Prove to me in ten seconds that you didn't murder my friend, or I'm going to kill every last one of you bastards! You're all going to die just like she did! <laughs> hey, hey, hold on a minute. Nine, eight, seven... Clover! Six, five, four... Clover. Three, two, one! Also wie man sieht, wieder so eine Stelle, wo man eine gewisse Erinnerung braucht. In dem Fall geht es wohl um genauere Informationen über Radical 6. Genau das. Those infected by Radical 6 eventually develop a powerful urge to commit suicide. Suddenly, Clover moved. I leapt forward and clamped my hand around her wrist. What are you doing? Clover, listen to me. Alice wasn't killed. Nobody murdered her. She... she took her own life. What? No! No! There's no way she'd do that! In der Zeitlinie ist es leider nicht klar, also das ist da einfach noch nie so passiert. It's true. She stabbed herself in the heart with the scalpel. Alright. Where'd she get the scalpel then? Well... Um, I did hear someone come into the infirmary right after the AB game ended. Was that before I showed up? Yes. I got up to see who it was, but they were already gone. It could have been Alice. So she could have taken the scalpel then. Yes, I think so. You're lying! This is all a lie! It has to be! It's not. It's the truth. Then why did she do it? Why would Alice kill herself? She... she probably didn't have a reason. What? She'd been infected with Radical 6. That's what killed her. But you just said she killed herself! Just tell me the truth! I am! Then prove it! Your ten seconds ran out a long time ago, so if you don't have any proof... I do! I have proof. There was a journal in the lab, wasn't there, Kay? Show it to me. A uh, journal? It would have been in the safe. Ah, well, Alice would have it then. Fi, can you... I don't feel right touching a dead woman's body. Could you take a look? Sure. In welcher Tasche hat die bitte dieses Buch? Na egal. Her hands barely shook as she quickly searched through Alice's clothing. It was only seconds before she stopped. Slowly and carefully she drew something out. There it was. The journal. Fi turned to hand it to me, but I shook my head. You read it. It's in Latin. I can't make heads or tails of it. 
She cocked an eyebrow at me and flipped the small book open. When she looked back up at me, it was with both, uh, both suspicion and surprise. Yeah, it is Latin. But translating this is impossible. It's full of words I've never heard before. I can barely understand any of this. Page 216. Huh? Turn to page 216. You should be able to read that one. Fai's frown deepened, but she did as I suggested. I watched her eyes quickly scan the page before looking up at me with renewed suspicion. Yeah, I can read this page. How did you know? No, wait. How did you even know there was a journal in the lab? I just... knew. You just knew? Come on. Look, just read it, okay? Clover wants to hear what it has to say. Right? Uh, yeah. Right. Give me a moment to look it over. After a few moments of whispering to herself in Latin, Fi began to translate, paraphrasing the contents of the journal. Radical 6 reduces the processing speed of the brain by a factor of the root of 1 sixth. One of the symptoms of Radical 6 infection is an overwhelming urge to commit suicide. Research has shown that it would probably respond to the right sort of antiviral medication, but no one has been able to develop one yet. Nearby towns are filled with the corpses of people who took their own lives. The uninfected have only barely managed to survive and have been sent into underground shelters supervised by the government. Oh lord, please. Let their future be a bright one. Fai shut the journal with a soft slap. A sickly silence drifted through the room. The newspaper article, the recording, the conversation with Tamiyoji, and now this journal entry. There was no more hiding from the truth. The pandemic had already happened. All of Clover's rage suddenly dissipated and she collapsed to the floor, tears pouring down her face. None of us had the heart to say anything, and for several long moments the only sound in the room was Clover's sobs. Um, we've got a problem. It's almost time for the primary doors to open. Yeah, only ten minutes left. Sorry, but I'll be taking Alice's bracelet. Fi and I won't be able to open the secondary door without it. So she was a magenta pear, just like me. Just now noticed that, did ya? As he spoke, Dio grabbed the bracelet off the floor and dropped it into his pocket. What color is your bracelet, Luna? I'm a cyan pear. You are part of Clover's pear, then. That means the two of you will need to come with me. I guess so. Come on now, Clover. We need to go. Alice would want you to survive, wouldn't she? You'll never be able to figure out why all this happened if you stay here. Please. You're right. Alice, I promise I'll find out what happened to you. I'll figure out who Zero really is. I mean, if you'd never been locked up in here, you never would have... This never would have happened. So... So it's like Zero killed you. I... I promise. I'll avenge you. Clover stood up and rubbed her hands roughly over her eyes, smearing tears across her cheeks. Then, with a determined frown, she strode out of the room. Alright, we're out of time. Move, people. You guys head on down to the Floor B warehouse. We'll catch up with you later. All right. Quark's got the yellow bracelet, which makes him your partner, right? Yeah. Can't exactly leave him behind. 
Without him, we'd end up stuck in the AB room. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go. We see the rest of you once we've picked up Quark. Very well. Until we meet again. Quark, you're awake. Yeah, I just woke up. Hey, where is everybody else? Oh God, Quark. Tenyoji's entire body shook with emotion as he drew closer to him. He cautiously laid a trembling hand on the boy's shoulder, almost as if he were afraid Quark would disappear in a puff of smoke the moment he was touched. When Quark proved to indeed be corporeal, Tenmyoji let out a cry and threw his arms around him. What? What's wrong? Are you okay, Grandpa? <laughs> That's nothing. Nothing's wrong. I'm... I'm fine. But... Quark gave him a puzzled look. Tenmyoji didn't even notice. His face was a mixture of happiness and relief. And I could see tears twinkling from the wrinkled corners of his eyes. All traces of his usual gruff stoicism had vanished. I didn't want to interrupt such a happy reunion, but we were running out of time. Still, Tamiyoji deserved a few minutes. I left them alone. At last, Tamiyoji seemed to recover and shifted from an embrace to a protective arm around the shoulder. So, how are you feeling? Feeling? Well, okay, I guess. Was I sick or something? No, no. You're not sick. If you feel fine, then you're fine. Huh? I'm sorry. I should never have gotten you involved in all this. What are you apologizing for? I'm sorry. You're doing it again. Are you sure you're okay? So... Where's everybody else? Mr. Sigma's here, but he's just been standing there looking kind of silly. I gave him a nervous smile and explained about the white doors. I got the feeling Tenmyoji didn't want Quark to know about Radical Six, so I avoided any mention of it. Alice's death was something I also left for later. Okay, that makes sense. That means I'm on a team with you guys, right? Right. So, um, these white doors, when are they gonna open? Well, we've got about four minutes until the primary doors open. Oh, that's not good. We need to hurry, come on! How do we get to the 4B warehouse? Okay, okay, we're going. Follow me. Irgendwie schön, dass Quark jetzt wieder Bewusstsein ist. Ich glaube, das ist das erste Mal, dass wir dann auch ein Escape Room haben, in dem... Ich glaube, das erste und einzige Mal in diesem Spiel, dass Quark tatsächlich in einem Escape Room, den man betritt, im also bei einem selbst im Team ist und bei Bewusstsein. Und sonst liegt er halt immer nur ohnmächtig rum. Ich glaube, sonst hat man ihn aber auch nur im Treatment Center dabei, also... Hm. Macht jetzt auch keinen Riesenunterschied. Warehouse B. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. You're late. Where the hell have you been? Quark? You're awake! And fully recovered, apparently. I am also relieved to see you well again. Me too. W wait a minute. What are you talking about? I looked out at the others from behind Quark, 
and held a warning finger up to my lips. There were a few momentarily raised eyebrows and some nervous coughing as everyone suddenly fell silent. Huh? From Quark's perspective, it must have seemed especially odd. Uh, um, anyway, there isn't any time left. We need to hurry. But there are three doors. Which team goes in which door? All of the doors are identical for this round. I believe it doesn't matter which team uses which door. Then we're taking the one in the middle. Why that one? You want a kill shot, you aim for the center. You're more likely to just miss the extremities. That logic is flawed and more than slightly disturbing. Unfortunately, I don't really have a counter-argument, so center door it is. I suppose we could go with the one on the left. Is that okay? I mean, we could go with the other one if you want. Ken Clover only nodded. Well, there's only one left. Yep, und ich würde sagen, bevor wir in diese Tür gehen, mache ich hier nochmal einen Schnitt. Hier endet dann diese Folge und in der nächsten gibt es dann wieder einen Escape Room. Ich glaube den vorletzten. Und ich bin gespannt, wie sich das Ganze noch entwickeln wird. Also dann, ich hoffe, ihr habt Spaß, lasst konstruktive Kritik da, vielleicht ein Däumchen nach oben. Und ja, Quark ist wieder wach, yay! Ähm, weiterhin gilt Theorien, Ideen, sonst was, insbesondere jetzt im Zug auf Tenmyoji und was er uns vielleicht hätte erzählen wollen, in die Kommentare. Was genau das sein wird, erfahrt ihr wahrscheinlich innerhalb der nächsten zwei bis drei Folgen. Bis dahin! Cheerio.